Hey, praise the Lord. By some force, um, that has become uh, difficult. However, there's a, where there is a, what does it say? Where there is a something, there is a way. Well, I have a desire to share the word with you. And I don't care who don't like it. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. The blood of Jesus is against you. You haven't stopped me in all this time. There must be something the Lord wants me to say. So good morning to you. Hope you had a great weekend. I had a good one. I rested. I needed rest. I had sinus infection that was typical of someone whose uh, immune system had uh, uh, gone down. You know, I, I, I try to help in the church, and I try my best to, um, you know, work in the house. I'm not into housework anymore. I am not. I am not. Lord, if that's part of my recovering from uh, Gary going home with the Lord, that's okay. I'll wait. I've been house cleaning and keeping for years. Y'all pray for me. Something's telling me to take everything down. Pull down all of my knickknacks. Get rid of my furniture. All the rugs. And start again. You know, we have new beginnings. Always new beginnings. He gives us second, third, fourth, fifth chances. He's given me more than that. How about you? Yeah, I've failed on, on many occasions. Failed to do his will. Failed to bring him praise and glory. But he gives me another chance. I failed to understand his will, failed to, um, to, to obey him. But his grace and his mercy, hmm, where sin doth abound, grace did much more abound. And I praise him for that. I thank him for that. I thank him because through all of the tests and the trials and the failings and the new beginnings, he's allowed me to grow and to be better because I learned to trust in him learn to lean on him when I lean to my own understanding I fail and sometimes the enemy catches me doing that but uh, you know encourage me to do that well this weekend was not one of those weekends by God's grace, I made it to church, not feeling good. Heard off and on what the pastor was saying. Okay. Um, of course, you chew up the meat and you spit out the bones. And um, I thank God for, for all of it especially the Word of God. That's why I want to come to you this morning. If, if you have nothing but faith in God and you can intercede, then we have a spirit of intercession because God gave us the Holy Ghost. I began to intercede for the little babies that came around me. Uh, at North Georgia Worship, I I am a um, usher, you know, not ushers per se, but a a greeter. And and each person I am blessed to greet comes in church, and I must thank God for them because I know it is by His grace and mercy that they're there. I know the enemy has fought them. Just like he fights me every week. You know, wanting us to give up. Wanting us to call it quits. Once, wanting us to uh, just sin or be in despair. 
for every t every person that comes through the doors of North Georgia Worship Center on Bishop Road, I know they receive a blessing. Because the greeters, and the other greeter's name is Gail, her middle name is Gail, I love her. Um, we love whoever comes through those doors. And uh, heartfelt, heartfelt love. We, a smaller congregation, so we don't wear masks. We see who we are uh, around. Um, it you look at the church and, and you would think that, uh, hmm, that God is not moving, but God is moving. And our church is growing, and, and the babies are, are there's so many babies, and those babies grow up. <laughs> they are, they are hilarious, hilarious. Just looking at them and, and watching, you know, from week to week, you know that some other portion of their brain has grown, because they, they're just growing from you know, mentally, emotionally. They're, they're a wild and crazy little bunch. And they're little. And I love them. The Lord laid on my heart to intercede. I wanted to feel his spirit while we had praise and thanksgiving. But uh, uh, praying for your babies, praying for the babies, that's what he put in me last Sunday. Those babies, those are the future. They are our future. They are the future of the church. And um, hmm, I was worshiping and worshiping and worshiping and had my eyes closed, my hands lifted. And, and down at my legs, down at the bottom part of my legs, there was somebody hugging me. Oh, the baby wouldn't go into church unless I hugged her. And I had to hug the babies. I just had to hug that baby. I hugged all of them. Just, uh, I'm not kissing because I know that, uh, you know, right now you be careful. But hugging, just uh, a holy hug. If it's all I can do, it's worth it. It's worth it. That meant something to me, that a baby would come to me. Regardless of my height or stature, color, or what I was wearing, they wanted love. Love. And they get it from home. But they get it from the house of prayer too, especially at North Georgia Worship Center, where Pastor Foshi is our pastor. And I thank God for the large church, Adam, Pastor Adams. I thank God for him. I learn a lot. But at this time, in 2022, it's time to be used. It's time to go past my personal life, my uh, hope and desire, my influence. It's time to be used. And that's exactly what I'm going to let the Lord do in 2022. I will no longer be shut into a box thinking about what people say and what they want to do or you know I want to hear the word and I want to chew the meat up and spit out the bones thank you Jesus Sunday before that I was led just to intercede for the church I just wish that we as uh, people I'd ask the Lord to please 
help us to return to the point in our relationship with the body of Christ that point where we will you know feel it on the inside not just come to the church for entertainment you know a lot of us are, are have uh, given up on the church because we the entertainment we come for entertainment it doesn't help entertainment don't doesn't help me I can get entertainment on television but I go to church to focus on the Lord let me give you some word I prayed earlier before I was interrupted by the internet. But I can get the word through in other ways. Okay? Okay, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Listen to this and be blessed. Take it with you, dear Father. Bless the reading of your word. You said it wouldn't go back into these pages void. Do what you said it would do. Help us, Lord, to remember to take these words and to hide them in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 27 and 14. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. Everybody's waiting for their stimulus. Everybody's waiting for their tax money. I am too. But while I'm waiting, he's strengthening me to keep going, to keep hoping. He's stretching me out, blessing my mind to, to recover uh, day to day, the scriptures and the promises found in his word. Psalm 30 and 5. Now what I'm going to read you today is going to give you something special. And that something special is courage. We need courage every day. Fear is always hanging around somewhere looking for someone that it can dive into and cause a person to become disgruntled, disheveled, depressed, disgusted, and discouraged. However, if we ask, we shall receive. And I'm asking today to, the Lord would bless us with courage. Psalm 30 and 5. For his anger endureth but a moment, in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. There are people that are going through, uh, um, how would you say when someone dies? Grief. Many are going home to be with the Lord. Young people, old people. And it causes our hearts to moan and our eyes to, to tear. You got a mixture of anger. Why did they leave me? And there's, then there's a mixture of, it's not suffering anymore. You know, you can flip flop on it. Um, uh, 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 and it goes on. Um, psychiatrists say we grieve for about maybe a good two years. Um, others grieve even longer if they allow it to consume them they will grieve for the rest of their lives my mom told me one day that um, it's a feeling you never get rid of you know the loss of a loved one and that's true that is true she was referring to her mom and her dad. Well, I've gone through grief before, you know, distant relatives, maybe a brother, my brother passed, my um, mama, dad, cousins, several cousins, aunts, uncles. However, living with someone, living with someone and having them to uh, pass is 
is different. A husband, a husband, even divorce. You grieve in divorce. It's like a, a member of your body has, has been severed. I've experienced that too. However, that weeping and that sadness endures but for a night. You'll get your joy back. You'll get your desire to live. You'll come out of that deep, dark hole that uh, you seem to be placed into. Grieving. Grieving. And don't allow the enemy to uh, take your joy from you. Don't allow the enemy to destroy your praise and your thanksgiving. Prove him a liar. Okay? To be absent from this flesh is to be present with the Lord. Look at his word and believe on it. Take your grieving a day at a time. Ask the Lord to give you strength for each day. You need the courage. So that's Psalms 30 and 5. Anger endureth but for a moment in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Hallelujah. Okay. Isaiah 43 and 2 says, When thou passest through the waters... I will be with thee, and through the rivers they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Hallelujah. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but he delivered us out of them all. Every one of them. And thou passest through the waters. We pass through waters. We're passing through waters now. Mm, he'll be with us, he says. Through the rivers, that's higher waters. Rivers, they're usually active. Rivers, troubles. Okay, they won't overflow us. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. When you walk through fire, hallelujah, you won't be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee, hallelujah. I like that kind of protection because I do be going through some rivers and some fires. And that rock, fire does nothing else but to purify and to cleanse us. Isaiah 43 and 2. Beloved, <clears throat> 1 Peter 4, 12 and 13 says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Don't, don't think it's strange or don't, don't think it's out of the ordinary. Hmm. Don't think it's, it's odd. Yeah, we are to go through fiery trials. This is how uh, God uh, 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 constructed our lives so that we would make choices while we're in the fire. Am I going to lose my, my peace while I'm in fire? Or am I going to draw nigh to the Lord and, and realize that he's nigh me? What am I going to do? It's a choice I make. Am I going to run from town or stand still and see the salvation of the Lord? He promised us so much. And one of those things is, uh, told us to, to, be, to be steadfast, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, stand still and see his salvation. Watch and see what he does. This year I'm standing. I'm standing. Standing on the rock of my salvation. He is my rock. He's all I have. He's all I need. 13th verse of First Peter, the fourth chapter says, But rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, 
See, we're being made into uh, miniature Christs, miniature Jesuses. We are being conformed to his image, not our image, not the image of uh, Fendi or the image of uh, who else is there, of some other movie star. We're being formed into God's image, the image of God. And that takes some work, honey. You got to go through some stuff and make some choices. And when his glory shall be revealed, he shall be glad also with exceeding joy. When the Lord reveals himself through you, you'll see, you'll feel, you'll experience joy. Okay. Romans 8, 38 and 39 says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, not height, not depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. There's nothing that can separate us from God. Why he loves us. I guess that's kind of why I love my kids. How tall they are. How hmm, strong they are how short they are, they are, their weaknesses, their strengths. I love my babies. I love my children. I love them enough to let them, let them go and let the Lord teach them as he has taught me not to lean to my own understanding. Romans 8, 38 and 39. That's how much he loves me. He allows me to see what was best for me. It was best for me to let him have his way with me. Not man. And right now, the enemy is telling a lot of us uh, to focus on money. Money, money, money. Don't get caught up in it. Know that we are still to give our tithes with joy and to, to share what we have and to, to be satisfied with what we have. That's a battle for me, satisfied with what I have, being content, and loving the Lord no matter what I have. I, I'm not uh, at all, I cannot say that uh, I have no food. He supplies my food. I cannot say that I have no place to live. I have a place to live. I have a bed. But I know it has not always been that way. I have been homeless in my lifetime. I have been hungry. I've felt hunger. I've been sad. I've been happy. But the joy of the Lord, when I think about what he has done for me, and he keeps heaping it on through the years, I can stay in the spirit for hours, thinking about how good he's been to me and mine. Because mm -hmm. he keeps sending it wave after wave of joy. Remember this, Gail? Remember what I did this day, Gail, and that day? Remember that year and that month? 
Hmm. I tell you, our God is, he's a consuming fire, all right. He'll consume your mind with delight, with happiness. He'll consume you, just burn up all the despair and all the sadness and all the regret and remorse and even hatred. He'll consume it. And there's nothing left in you but a thank you, Jesus. Mm, even for the rough times. Deuteronomy 33 and 27 says, The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are his everlasting arms, and he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee, and shall say, Destroy them. Ha <laughs> ha. That's why you don't worry about your enemy. Yeah, don't worry about him. He will. What does he say? He'll thrust him out. Takes time, but he'll thrust him out. Don't try to, uh, uh, how would you say, repay evil for the evil done to you. He'll take care of your enemy. I've seen him do it. I've seen him do it. He'll take care of your enemy. I've seen him do it for years and years and years. And so keep your eyes on God. Psalm 118, 17. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. I shall not die but live to declare the works of the Lord. I'm a living witness. I've got a testimony. Jesus saves, honey. If he saved me, and I know he saved me, but he can save you too. Okay? He can save you. And he saves. He's awesome. Philippians 4.13 I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. Well, I can. I'm looking at something I, I was dreading. The word is dread. Lord, please take dread out of my heart. I hate work. <laughs> but I gotta work. Today is a work day. It's a work day for you too. Right now it's 7.53 in the morning and I love you. Make Christ part of your life. Take time out to pray. Know that he's a healer. There's something special about communion. Please take communion. Please take Holy Communion. Confess your sins. Confess your sins. And then take a little piece of bread and some juice. And we do this in remembrance. This is the body. The bread is the body. Eat. Then the blood, which is the little juice. And do it in remembrance of what he did for us. He did it for us something that we couldn't do for ourselves and that is redeem us redeem ourselves we could not stop the sin in our life we could not correct our behavior we could not correct the false beliefs that we uh, uh, people would put upon you we couldn't correct them we couldn't stand we were fearful we were uh, uh, We were uh, just on our way to hell. But you made a decision to trust him. So keep trusting him. Trust him with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Another thing, when mother says exercise, you got to take care of this here. This will take you to heaven or hell, depending on uh, your uh, faith. This, you need to exercise this. I'm telling a son that quite often these days. And, uh, he makes excuses. 
That's a soul that hasn't been afflicted with any sickness, not yet. But we've got to take care. These are temples of God. We just can't sit around and hide. Yeah, because uh, we hide. You know we do. We, we try to hide from the afflictions. We try to hide from this, this world. We work all that them hours and we come home. I don't want to be bothered with nothing else boob tube. But we learn obedience by what we suffer, don't we? Mm -hmm. Kaya, I love you. Dewana, Kathy James. I ain't heard from you. But I'm praying. I love you. I'm your big sister and I love you. I love you. Because I can relate to you, Kathy James. I've been there. I bought the t-shirt and the pumps. Okay? Who else am I speaking about? Tiffany. Hmm. You're on your way, darling. God bless you. Pastor Adams, I love you. Always will. Love you and your wife. Uh, Cynthia Adams, love you. Love your family. Beautiful family. Pastor Foshi and Denver, y'all work entirely too hard. Lord, 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 I want them to last. Lord, give them strength. In Jesus' name, they work so hard. God help them. I ain't never seen people work so hard in my life. I thought Mexicans were hard workers. I'm sorry, I gotta go back to the ethnic thing. I thought black people worked hard. I see some hard working white folks too. I'm serious. Work hard, little women, little, little, little white women, little white men. Jesus, just work. My husband was a worker. That's all he thought life was about working, working. Hmm. I work as well, but you can believe there's a part of my life <laughs> right now. <laughs> I ain't got to work that hard. Hello. I love you, Jesus. Thank you. And one day I won't have to work at all, nowhere. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. He pitied every groan. <sighs> May God bless you and keep you. My name is Mother Gail Trailer. I love you all. Joanne, Barbara, Almeta, Renee, my sisters, and my big brother. I got a big brother. His name is M.H. I love you. May God bless you. I'm just passing through.